I just saw Doctor Strange and I'm pissed. Okay, first of all, the movie was fine. Like, it's fine. And I mean that in, in like, the literal meaning of the word fine. The movie was extremely fine. Just want to get that out of the way. I'm not saying this movie is the worst movie in the world, but it did, as the title states, made me... It made me just so, so tired. Maybe it's because I watched the finale to Moon Knight last night also, but you know what? We're gonna talk about some stuff here. So I know the movie just came out and a lot of you probably haven't seen it yet. So spoilers for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Also spoilers for WandaVision. Also spoilers for Moon Knight. Also spoilers for like uh, other movies probably too. Like Batman v Superman, I guess. I'm angry. Dr. Strange's arc in this movie. Let's talk about Dr. Strange's character arc for a second. His arc in the movie is sort of non-existent, but it has a lot to do with romance, right? Christine Palmer, the, the, the love interest from the first movie that, that nobody really cared about and was also uh, very heavily important in that What If episode that was actually kind of fun. Um, yeah, she's the love interest in this one again, but she got married and Strange is real sad about that. And that's kind of his whole deal. So, when you think Doctor Strange and romance, you usually think of Clea, right? That's like, yeah, I don't know that much about Doctor Strange, but I do know that usually his love interest is Clea, and another like witch lady with white hair and a lot of purple. I guess. And I had that thought about halfway through this movie. I was like, they're really leaning heavily into uh, Strange's whole like arc in this movie being that he's sad about Christine getting married and that he didn't get the girl or whatever. Uh, so it's weird that, th th you know, like that should be Clea, right? And I was like, eh, whatever. You know, that maybe that's ham-fisted, that's comic book stuff, who cares? It, because they've already established Christine, so let's just use Christine. It would be hard to have that same arc of Strange being sad about romance if it's just this lady we've never met in the context of the MCU. Uh, but then the mid credit scene, Clea shows up, it's Charlize Theron. <laughs> she literally, she shows up and her, the entire mid credit scene is just, hey, you fucked up, come with me and we're gonna fix it. And then they jump into a space portal and it's like, come on. Way to undercut the entire movie by just being like, hey, Fuck all that. Time time to go to the next thing. And look, maybe that sounds like just a criticism of, of mid-credits and post-credits teasers for the next thing in general, but it really isn't. It, it, it is when it kind of undercuts your whole movie. Um, and maybe this doesn't to you and that's fair, but it's just so frustrating when I have that thought as a comic book fan of like, hey, this would be cooler with Clea and it would make more sense with Clea in this role. And that would probably affect the rest of the movie because that would be more interesting to have to have Clea in the role of Christine instead of just this lady who's here doing nothing, pretty much. She's just as acting as strange as foil. And, and it's just, you know, you think about that and you're like, oh, well, that would've been cool. Oh, well, maybe, maybe in 10 years we'll do another Doctor Strange movie and it'll be cool. But then at the end of the movie, they're like, hey, we were thinking that too, but we already sold you a ticket on this movie. So we're gonna sell you a ticket on the next movie by telling you, hey, maybe next time we'll get the movie you actually wanted. Fuck you. This is kind of rippled throughout the entire movie also. Like it's not just a symptom of this mid credit scene. Pretty much all of the stuff that you in the theater fucking coomed at with the Illuminati and, and America Chavez, she's fine, I guess. But like all of the little comic book things, oh, they said Thawne, whoa! John Krasinski from the Photoshop, he's in the movie! Let me ask you a question. What does any of that have to do with the actual movie? Nothing. If you really sit and think about it, the Illuminati and, and most of the multiverse, the multiverse itself being in this movie has nothing to do with what the movie is actually about, which is Strange being upset that his life as a superhero can't let him have the life he actually wants to have, and on the flip side, that Scarlet Witch is life as a superhero, can't let her have the life she wants to have. Hey, there's a theme there, but it's buried under next thing, constantly, and over, and over, and I'm so tired of it because that is what every fucking Marvel product is nowadays. Let's go back to the Avengers. Kind of the first next thing tease, the big thing at the end of the movie, Thanos shows up. He turns his little head and he grins. And it's not Josh Brolin yet because they had no idea what the fuck they were doing yet. And I think that's an important key factor here. But the point is that worked. And I could tell you why that worked. That worked because 
Thanos is not in the movie. There's nothing in the movie to, to say that Thanos is coming. You can infer that maybe if you're like fucking from the future, but the movie is about the Avengers getting together and Loki is the supervillain. Thanos happens to have ties to Loki like later in like, you know, retcons and shit, but that worked as a tease because it's saying, hey, this is where we could go if we continue. We could go to Thanos, and eventually we did. But in the course of the movie, it's not obstructed by any of that leading up to the next thing. Like, like the movie is whole without that tease. You can remove that scene, and it's still a movie that makes sense. But if you remove the Clea scene, where it's like at the end of the movie, where she's like, hey, you created an incursion. We got to go deal with that. We got to go do secret wars then what is all of the Illuminati stuff for? Nothing. It adds nothing to the movie other than some cool death scenes, I guess. And again, like I do want to state, visually speaking, stuff like that can add to the movie. Like Easter eggs exist for a reason. They get people excited. It's cool, like visuals. But when most of your movie is just that stuff, like it just doesn't add anything of substance, you know? Let's go back to Scarlet Witch for a second. Like I said earlier, her arc is similar to Strange's in that, you know, at least in my interpretation of it, their lives as superheroes or super beings can't let them have the lives that they actually want. In Strange's case, it's, I guess, settling down with Christine. In Wanda's case, it's having her family back. So Wanda's arc more specifically in this movie is that she has to learn to accept the fact that she can't have a family, you know? She can't just go steal one like Kingpin did or wanted to do in Into the Spider-Verse. By the way, let's stop that plot of, of, oh, I'm gonna go to a different universe to find my family because they're dead in this universe. It's happened like seven times now. Knock it off. So she learns that at the end of this movie. She's like, okay, yeah, I get it. I, you know, whatever. I, I was wrong. I was corrupted by the Darkhold. Who cares? Whatever. Let's not do this again. Blah, blah, blah. Great. You know uh, where that arc happened already? WandaVision, <laughs> the show that was a prequel to this, sort of. Because, of course, next thing, you know, everything is a prequel to everything in, in fucking 2022 modern day media. I just, if you didn't watch WandaVision, and I'm I'm guessing that that's the opinion that, that Sam Raimi and Marvel uh, had when making this movie, is that nobody watched WandaVision, because that is her arc in that show but they undercut it with the fucking post credit scene where she's fucking with the Darkhold because it's like, oh yeah, Wanda can't actually be happy because she has to go on to appear in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness and have the exact same character arc that she did in WandaVision where she loses control of her power, goes too far, realizes she went too far and says, hmm, maybe I should reel it in. At least in this movie, they didn't reset her arc again or like at the end of the movie, God, if, if, if her kids showed up like as grownups or, or teenagers like they are in the comics uh, in, in at the end of the movie, I would have been so upset. Like again, that would have been cool. And I like Wiccan. I, I don't really care for speed. He's dead for most of the time, but I really like Wiccan as a character. Uh, and if he showed up, I'd be like, hey, cool. Like one of the hey, cool moments in this movie for me was seeing Captain Carter uh, in, in live action. That was cool. That was something that I really hoped they would do watching What If. I talked about that a lot in our review of, of the episode over on Absolutely Marvel on DC. And seeing that fully realized was kind of the one moment in the theater I was like, hey, that's fun. Like, that's cool. And, and maybe, uh, maybe you think I'm crazy for not saying that about John Krasinski as, as, uh, Mr. Fantastic or, or Patrick Stewart as, as Charles Xavier. But like, I don't know. All of that stuff was not set up and it and 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 it doesn't mean anything. It's not going anywhere. It's just like, "Hey, look at this." And like also as a comic book fan, when you say the when you're doing the Illuminati, it's like and all the rumors that were leading up to this, it's like, "Yeah, you say we're doing the Illuminati. I know you have the X-Men. I know you have Fantastic 4 now. I I know who's going to show up, you know? Like it's not as big of a surprise, but like they didn't need to put Haley Atwell in there, but they did. And I was cool. It doesn't matter. It doesn't add anything, but that's a cool visual thing. That's all cool visual things. I'll say that. They're cool visually. Anyway, I don't know how I got on that tangent, but uh, Wanda's arc was not, like, thrown away like Strange's was in this. Another fucking Marvel thing that I, that I mentioned earlier was the Moon Knight. Moon Knight finale. I did not like that show. It had some fun moments, but writing was weird. Uh, and ultimately just a waste of, of a show, of a, of a six-hour movie on Moon Knight where 
it's just not a Moon Knight show. Anyway, th throughout the course of that show, they tease another personality that's inside Mark's head, Jake Lockley, who is like the, the violent one. He's not really the violent one in, in the comics. He's just another guy who drives a cab. In, in the show, it's like, oh, he's the one who kills people very violently. Um, that's what they went with, which is fine, whatever, that's a fine change, but they didn't actually, f like, fully reveal the fact that it was Jake Lockley until the post credit scene of the f series finale, season finale, whatever. The reason that's so frustrating to me is one of my criticisms of the show is that they kept cutting away from the action, or whenever we did see action, it was really short, like in the last episode. There was some cool action in that last episode, but it was like 10 seconds of action and then they would cut or in the earlier episodes, literally they would cut away and not show us Mark as Moon Knight fighting so we could get back to Steven being a dumbass. And they did that every time with Jake Lockley and that was kind of interesting because we didn't know what they were cutting to. But there was no realization of that. Like, if, if you don't watch the post credit scene, if you don't know that there's a post credit scene, which is very fair because it's a show of six episodes where none of them had a post credit scene except for the last one, then maybe you, there's just a complete plot line that is com totally forgotten about, which, by the way, it is for, like, the, the last two episodes. Like, they just don't do it until, like, one of the last scenes of episode six and then the post credit scene where it's like, hey, this is my bud, Jake Lockley. And and Conchu was the one who introduces him, so it's like he's very clearly still Moon Knight. And it's just like, oh, here's the show that you wanted in this post credit scene. Uh, stay tuned in three years. So, I hope we got your sale three years from now. Fuck off, Disney. Also, Disney's not the only one that's, like, guilty of this. It's really any popular blockbuster nowadays that does this shit. I remember back in Batman v Superman, a really egregious case of this was when the Flash shows up out of, like, time or whatever, and he's like, I'm too early. He's talking to Bruce. He's saying, like, Lois is the key to everything or something. That, that's, that doesn't make any goddamn sense in the context of that movie at all and honestly i don't think it ever did if they did resolve that in justice league or whatever i don't remember because it was so inconsequential and stupid that it like it's just, it adds nothing to the movie and it just sets up the next movie which like sure if you want to set up a sequel set up a sequel but don't do it in a way that's so weird and out of place in your current movie like, like lay seeds that you can later sow you don't just fucking put the plant that that harvests two years from now in like you don't time, you don't literally time travel to <laughs> to tease your next fucking movie. Stop it! Oh, this cheeseburger is pretty good, but I'm gonna put it down over here and start eating uh, tomorrow's meal, and and then never finish this one because that one fucking sucks. It's like focus, live in the moment for a minute, man. Make the movie you're making, and then collect yourself and and make a different movie. You know. You don't have to set things up for the next fucking 20 years. And of course, Kevin Feige and the boys are off to, you know, a forest somewhere where they're going to plan the next 10 years of Marvel movies. Great. Hopefully they can have an actual roadmap so they're not just, just like, oh, I guess this happens next. Because that's really how all of these teases have felt. Because like Thanos was, was a tentpole, right? It's like everything's leading towards Thanos eventually, but it's like in small parts where each movie is like, oh, there's an infinity stone in this movie, but it's really not that important to the main story. It just happens to be one like Thor the Dark World. Bad movie, right? But the Aether just is like, okay, they sure, that's an infinity stone. But in the context of that movie, it doesn't really matter. Like the, there's a point for retconning, I guess, whatever. Same with like Loki's scepter, like I mentioned earlier, like it doesn't matter. But later you can mine that and say like, hey, that was a thing. That's cool, right? And then it kind of recontextualizes the movie and you can think about it in a different way. If your whole goddamn movie is is just setting things up very obviously, then you have no more room left to tell the story that you're there to tell in that moment. And it just gets crushed by next thing. Yes! Yes, I, I love the- I love Jim from The Office with a beer! That being said, be sure to like and subscribe for my next video that'll come out real soon, I promise. Stay tuned!